Hi, I'm Vijay Krishna Prasad. I'm part of the OpenDXL development team, and today I'll be talking about how OpenDXL integrates with Node-RED. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to get the OpenDXL Node-RED image uh, from Docker, and for that I'm in Kitematic to simplify the use of Docker. And I'm gonna start by finding the image, so by hitting New, and you search for the OpenDXL Node-RED image, and then download it locally. And hit Create to pull this Docker image down to your uh, system. And once it's installed, you can go into the settings and into the volumes and choose the folder where the Node-RED data will be stored locally. I'm going to choose a pre-created uh, OpenDXL Node-RED folder on my system and then go into the host name and ports and choose a port to start my Node-RED container. Once I finish that, the image should start running. We take a look at the host name and port, and using a browser, we're gonna log into this Node-RED image. The port was uh, 8080 and localhost, so we're gonna log into Node-RED now. The default username and password is admin and password. You can log in to Node-RED and you should come into a screen where you see all the nodes. So once you log into Node-RED, you will see that there's a lot of pre-built nodes, uh, the DXL nodes, uh, and if you hover over them, you'll get some details. And these are already pre-configured in this image. Clicking on them will give you some more additional information, help instructions on how to use these nodes. The first thing I'm gonna do is to show you how to receive an event from a DXL fabric within Node-RED. So we're gonna drag the DXL event subscriber node, and you'll have to now connect to a fabric and so the first thing we have to do is to provision the client by clicking that little pencil icon and uh, provision a new configuration. You can now connect either to a managed uh, fabric via EPO or using OpenDXL fabric. We're going to do it with an EPO. So we have to get hold of the EPO IP or host name and then the uh, login credentials to EPO and provide a common name for the certificate and, and then provision the uh, client. And then done. Now that our client is provisioned, we're now ready to start receiving events. We go into the node and choose a topic, my event topic, and click done. And then I'm going to drag a debug node to see any messages, uh, events coming through the DXL fabric and connect the output of the event node to the debug node. Uh, I'll switch to the debug pane so we can see these debug messages and deploy the flow. If everything went successfully, you should see the connected state on the event subscriber node. And now to send events, we, we go to our OpenDXL console and send a message to my event topic and a payload so we can see these messages and send them several times so we can get them in our Node-RED flow. Now we go back to the node red, and you can see these messages. And if I hover over the node, you can see that it came from this debug node. Now I'm going to use a node red to send DXL events to the fabric. And for that, we're going to drag the DXL event publisher node. And then choose a topic to send. And I'll choose my random.
And then I'm going to in, uh, drag the inject node so I can either manually or at an, at an interval um, send this event. So I will choose an interval of 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, we'll be able to send uh, to this topic. And since we chose a random, I'm going to also drag in the random node and then connect the inject to the random node and the output of the random to the my random event publisher and hit deploy and you should see that the node is connected so now we go back to our open dxl console and add a subscription to the my random topic and we should start seeing a random event come every 10 seconds. There's the first one, and about 10 seconds later, you will see another one. You see that the payload is 10, and the next one is a random number, which is eight. I'm gonna stop the uh, event from being sent every 10 seconds by turning it to none. We hit done and deploy. The next thing we're going to do is to create a RESTful-like service on the DXL fabric. For that, we drag the DXL service node onto the flow. And then choose a service type, my service. And I'm going to add topics, which are like methods that can be invoked on the DXL fabric. So the echo topic and a random topic. And then we click done and now you notice that there are two outputs on this DXL service node. We're going to now drag a template node onto the flow which helps us format the response for the echo topic. And if you click on the template node you can see the template for formatting the response. And in this case, it'll just send the payload. And for the other random topic, we're gonna to drag the random node and connect that output from the DXL service node onto it. And we're gonna increase the random number from one to 1000. So the next thing we'll do is to drag the DXL response node and connect the template and the random nodes to this response. And then go ahead and deploy this flow. Now if we go back to our DXL console, you should see the my service that we just created with the two topics, echo and random. So now if I send a request on this topic echo, you'll see that we got the payload formatted. This is the payload and our payload that we passed in. And if I go ahead and request, send a message to the random topic, you see the random numbers coming through on the Dixel fabric. So now we're going to invoke the service we just created with a node red. So we'll drag the DXL request node and invoke the random service. So we go into it, we'll choose the random topic. And then I'm going to drag the debug node so we can see the results of the invocation and connect the request node to the debug node. And then we'll also uh, drag in the inject node so we can manually trigger the request and connect that to the request node and apply the flow. So if I now click on the injector, you should see the random messages coming just like we did with the OpenDXL console. By default, the OpenDXL node red image has the core DXL modules that we just saw, but we have other DXL modules that can be downloaded for products like Tai and Mar. To do that, we'll go into the Manage Palettes, into the Install tab, and search for OpenDXL. 
And as you can see, there are several modules that you can choose from. And I'll choose the DXL MAR module and click Install. So as you can see, the new node has been added to the palette. And if you scroll down, you should see the uh, nodes that are available to perform a MAR search. If you click on that uh, in the Info tab, uh, you should be able to get help on this node and see how you can perform a search using MAR, which is Mac McAfee Active Response. Each module also contains a set of examples. In this case, you can go into Import, Examples, DXLMAR Client, and we're going to choose the basic search example. And you'll see that the new flow is now visible. Click on it, and you can see this predefined flow. The info uh, gives you all the information on, on this flow including one of the prerequisites for this flow is that this DXL client has to be authorized to perform this MAR search. So to authorize this Node-RED DXL client, we go back to EPO and log in. And in the server settings, DXL topic authorization, click Edit. And we choose the Active Response Server API group, and then restrict who can send certificates. And now I'll choose the VG certificate that we created earlier in Node Red. Click OK and click Save. At this point, the DXL client in Node Red is authorized to perform a MAR search. Now we come back to Node-RED and I click on the debug message tab to see messages. And I click on the inject node to start the MAR search. And this will provide the results of all the hosts that have an active MAR client connected and give us their IP addresses. As you can see, we have only one and you can see the IP address of that system. Now we're going to go to opendxl.com and grab predefined flows. For that, we go into solutions. Into node red, into flows. And take a look at this MISP flow. This particular flow, uh, when an event, MISP event is published on the fabric, if it contains any hashes, we will do a MAR search to find any managed systems that contain these hashes. And if they do, we will add a citing back to the MISP event. So that if you scroll down, you can copy the flow. Go ahead and copy this entire flow and back to Node Red. and into the menu and click import is the clipboard and paste the flow and now you can see that you have the uh, add sightings hash to misp workflow if you click on the info you will see the information on this flow and the prerequisites that it requires to run the flow and like i mentioned earlier this will add any sightings to uh, back to misp if it contains any hash based attributes So we go ahead and deploy this flow. So now we log into our MISP server and we will import an event which contains some hashes. So I'll go ahead and import. Browse to my local file system for the event that I have created and upload it to the server. If I click into the details of this event, you can see that it's not published. And if we scroll down, you can see that it contains two hashes, an MD5 and a SHA1. I'm going to go ahead and publish this event. Now we go back to our uh, node red and as you can see, the MISP event was received over the Excel. You can look at all the details of this event. And if you look at the attributes, we should see the two attributes, the MD5 hash and the SHA1 hash we just saw.
And while we were browsing the uh, MISP event, it was found on one system and that added the sighting back to MISP. So if you go back to MISP and refresh, you should see that it was published and it also has a sighting. You can see that the sighting was on the SHA-1 hash. And if you click into the advanced sightings and drill down into it, you can and click the all, you can get the information of the IP address on the system which it was found. Thanks for viewing this video that demonstrated how OpenDXL can be used with Node-RED. For more information, please visit OpenDXL.com.